In this lesson, we're going to look at some tools and structures for handling common kinds of Simulink modeling challenges, including if statements, switches, and Boolean logic. To start with, let's discuss if statements. If you've done any programming before, the concept of having some kind of an if, else if, else structure should be very familiar to you. But if you haven't done any programming before, that's okay. We'll cover what you need to know to use this logic structure. It's common to see problems in which you need to take different actions based on a particular set of criteria. By the way, sometimes there is more than one else if condition, and sometimes there is no else if condition. So you may be choosing between two situations or three situations or more. Fortunately, Simulink provides an if statement block along with subsystems to be triggered by that block and a merge block to merge the outputs of those subsystems as the input conditions change. It's also common to route the output of this logic back to one of the states and to lock in a value, as I'll show you in a model shortly. As an example, imagine that an autonomous car is trying to decide which of two lanes to drive in. If it can drive at its desired speed in the right lane, then it stays in that lane. Else if it can't stay in its current lane and maintain its desired speed because of a slow moving vehicle ahead of it, but the left lane is vacant, it will move to the left lane. Else, it can't maintain its desired speed in the right lane because of traffic ahead of it and can't move over into the left lane, then it will just drive as close to its desired speed as it can while still maintaining adequate space from the vehicle ahead of it. This kind of logic structure comes up all the time where the logic that we want to apply is based on the circumstances. I'll go ahead and create a new Simulink model, open the library browser, go to the ports and subsystems section, and pull the if block into the model. While I'm at it, I'll also pull an if action subsystem block into the model. I'll open the if block and set it up to accept two inputs. My first input will be the result of a comparison of the speed that the car is able to attain in the right lane with the desired speed. And my second input will be a flag to tell the logic whether the left lane of traffic is vacant. I'll need a compare to constant block for this, which I'll pull in from the logic and bit operations section of the library browser. I'm going to set the desired speed to 70 and check whether the car's actual speed is equal to or greater than that value. I'll go ahead and feed the comparison output into the if block's first input. I have three different possibilities for the vehicle, so I'll create three if action subsystems and give them meaningful names. I'll call the first subsystem currently in good. I'll call the second subsystem currently in bad adjoining lane good. and I'll call the third subsystem both lanes bad. Going back into the if block, I'll set both of my conditions to be u1 does not equal zero for the if condition and u2 does not equal one for the second condition. Then I'll connect the three outputs of the if block to the top input of the if action subsystems. Now I'll pull a signal builder block from the sources into the model and I'll go to the menu to signal new pulse. Since I have two inputs to my if block there are four different possible combinations of inputs and I'll want to test all of them so I'll set up my signal builder to have both signals at their default. 0 for the second signal to indicate a vacant left lane, and a 70 for the first signal to indicate current speed, which is equal to the desired speed. I'll go ahead and select each point in the signal builder and set up the speed to be 70, except that I'll make the max speed that the vehicle can obtain 60 from 4 to 6 seconds to indicate a slower vehicle ahead of it in the current lane. I'll also change the pulse in the second signal, indicating a full left lane, to occur from 3 to 5 seconds. I'll close the signal builder and feed its inputs into the second input of the if block and into the compare to constant block. 
The problem with the logic feeding into the if block is that the if block expects that the data types coming into it will be the same, and I should be giving it Boolean data types, but the output of the signal builder block is a double data type. I'll fix this by going to commonly used blocks, pulling in a data type conversion block between the second output of the signal builder and the second input of the if block, and telling the conversion block to convert its input to a Boolean data type. I'll also take a merge block from the signal routing section, give it a third input, and route all of the if action subsystems into it. I'll also drop in a scope after the merge block. The output of my merge block will indicate which lane the car should be in, with one as the right lane and two as the left lane. If the right lane is good, the car can maintain its desired speed, I want to output a 1. The car should stay in its lane. I'll go into the first if action subsystem, delete the input because I don't need it, and pull in a constant with a value of 1 to feed into the subsystem's output. Before I leave this subsystem, I'll copy the logic and then I'll paste it into the second if action subsystem, modifying the constant value to 2. For the last if action subsystem, I want to tell the car to stay in whichever lane it is currently in since traffic is heavy and it can't drive at its desired speed in either lane. So in this case, I'll feed the output of the merge block back into the input of the if action subsystem. If you want to create a new signal feeding off of an existing signal, hold down the control key on your keyboard and click on the source signal. I'll try it now. There's something else important that I want to point out here. I've just created something called an algebraic loop, which is bad. An algebraic loop exists whenever the input at the current time is dependent on the output at the current time. My algebraic loop goes from the output of the both lanes bad subsystem through the merge block and back to the input of the both lanes bad subsystem. There is an easy way to fix this problem, dropping a unit delay block into the loop. I'll go ahead and do that now, pulling in the block from the discrete section. I need to rotate this block by 180 degrees. I can rotate blocks by selecting a block and hitting Control R. I'll do that now with the unit delay and drop it into the loop. I'm using some discrete logic in this model with my unit delay block, so I'm going to go to the simulation option in the menu, back to the model configuration parameters, and go with a fixed step discrete solver with a 10 millisecond step time. Okay, I'll run the simulation now. I'll open the scope block and the signal builder block side by side. The car has no reason to change lanes in the first four seconds since it's able to maintain its desired speed in its current lane, lane one. At four seconds, it is no longer able to maintain its desired speed in lane one, but lane two is occupied, so it stays in lane one. At 5 seconds, it still can't maintain its desired speed in lane 1, but lane 2 is open, so it moves into lane 2 so that it can drive at its desired speed in lane 2. At 6 seconds in, it's able to drive with the desired speed in its original lane again, so it moves back into lane 1 and stays there. This illustrates how you can set up an if-else-if-else if subsystem and test all possible input combinations. Another way to perform something similar is with switches. Switches allow you to look at some criteria and to determine whether to pass through input A or input B based on that criteria. Switches can allow you to accomplish the same kinds of things as if statements, but sometimes the code is easier to read with an if statement. And sometimes, as when dealing with arrays or when there is no else if condition, the code can end up being cleaner with switches. I like to use switches when handling a simple switch between a scalar constant and a scalar signal. On the other hand, if switching between complex logic, I often find the model cleaner and more readable with an if statement. There is also a manual switch block available that you can use in simulation. Sometimes you want to be able to run a simulation, flip a switch to change an input to something else, and rerun the simulation. This block can be helpful for simple cases like that. On occasion, I also find myself using the multiport switch, which you can find under the signal routing section. These allow me to use a single input to choose among several outputs. The selector for the multiport switch simply selects a switch based on output port number. We've already done an example model with a switch with account and hold logic in a previous lesson, but I'll give you another example later in this lesson. Boolean logic can also be used for decision making and controlling switches. Sometimes you will find yourself using a simple logic gate to drive the condition for a switch. For example, if A and B are both true, 
then pass through signal one, otherwise pass through signal two. Other times, Boolean logic can help with setting flags for an if statement input or for bit masking or some other kind of operation. I recommend avoiding complex Boolean logic structures if you can. It may be tempting to make a decision based on a number of logic gates, but this can often produce difficult to read code. In addition, in many real world scenarios, you will encounter don't care scenarios and find ways to simplify your logic such that you can implement a simplified truth table via an if statement. I find that it is nearly always possible for me to create the decision making logic that I need with at most three logic gates, so I would challenge you to try to minimize your use of these. If you create a subsystem with 10 to 20 logic gates, it could take someone else some time to generate a truth table to understand how your logic works. One last point on this, Simulink offers a combinatorial logic block in the logic and bit operations section that serves as a truth table implementation, so if there is no way to readily implement your Boolean logic with a few gates or to simplify it, then you can use this block. Let's try a quick example with a switch and a logic gate. Using the same signals from my signal builder block, I'll pull in a switch in two constant blocks. and I'll make a copy of the scope. I'll feed the first constant block into the first switch input and the second constant block into the second switch input. The switch block will feed the scope. I'll pull in a logical operator block to feed into the switch's decision input and set the logical operator to be a NOR gate which outputs a 1 only when both inputs are 0. Then I'll give the top constant block a value of 2, and the bottom constant block will retain a value of 1. I'll connect the NOR gate's inputs to the same signal lines as are feeding the IF block, and I'll run the simulation again. If we compare the outputs of each set of logic in the two scopes, we'll see that each set of logic does the same thing. So in this case, using a switch with a logic gate is a simple solution. However, oftentimes you need the if statement form because you may have many conditions to switch between, or you want to execute certain logic within the if action subsystems, and using logic gates would actually make the model much harder to read. So select whichever approach is appropriate based on the complexity of your logic. Okay, so in this session we've looked at if statements, switches, and Boolean logic. Next time you encounter a situation in which you need your model to switch between the logic that it executes based on some input criteria, you should be well prepared.